Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Society, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, a couple different hairsprings in Rolex and um, I like both of them but for very different reasons. First of all, the Rolex Parachrome hairspring is made with niobium, zirchromium, and oxygen. There's a, uh, a oxide layer that's where the oxygen comes from. And if if you look at it, it's a it's a very standard, I suppose would be the word, uh, free balance uh, design. Uh, you have uh, four adjustment weights that they call the micro Stella screws, and you can move them in and out, and this will give you uh, a good balance. Uh, you have the overcoil, the Tabergay overcoil, too. Uh, this is this helps. <laughs> the isochronism of the of the balance. So, um, this is to me is, is sort of the optimum uh, hairspring that that Rolex makes. Now, the issue that I want to sort of deal with is the whole issue of silicon. Silicon, I'm. We all know that it's sort of what is the heart of computers and smartphones and so forth. But do we want them in our watches? Do we want silicon in watches? And I, I, I think the answer to that, at least my answer is no. In a recent interview with uh, Tim Mosso, um, Philippe Dufour said that he was talking about, he says using metals and so on and so forth that will that you know have that can take shock and you know heat and, and cold and so forth and uh, is non-magnetic you can there are a lot of non-ferrous metals that you can work with and uh silicone he doesn't like it it's not flex i mean it's brittle uh for one thing and there are some other problems with it that uh, he didn't like and um to me it's sort of like well we know that uh Quartz uh, will outperform anything we can do with a hairspring <laughs> and a balance. And so we decided not to go that direction. We want to see the craftsmanship and the movement and so on and so forth. And I sort of see silicon the same way is that, you know, yeah, sure, it's got a lot of good things about it, several good things. But should we go that way? Um, take a look at the Siloxi hairspring. Now, Siloxi is, is, this is another Rolex hairspring. Siloxi is from silicon uh, oxide and silicon. I should have get the name Siloxi. Uh, and in looking at it, I gotta tell you, I was very impressed by the way they did it. The, uh, I like the way that it's attached to the balance shaft using this uh, collet that grabs onto it. There's not glued or anything else on there. And then it just sort of comes out of the collet and spins out, and then it terminates at the at this crescent that they put in there. And uh, you have the uh, you have the balance screws there, so it's something that you can, you know, lo like a free sprung uh, movement or a free sprung uh, balance. But um, okay, so so what? <laughs> Now let me explain what why they selected they they selected it to overcome the effects of environmental disturbances that um, affect the oscillations uh, the oscillator's performance. Okay, that makes sense, um, and most notably the temperature changes, the magnetic attractions, and um, gravity and shocks it can handle those better than. Uh, your typical, your other non-ferrous metals. I don't know. I, I've got. Um, I would say, yeah, sure. But you know, by the same token, to me, it's it's not the right direction. Uh, but that's just me. And uh, I'd be interested to see what you think. By the way, too, Patek Philippe. They're now using all silicon. Uh, there's a consortium between uh, Patek Philippe. Swatch and Rolex, where they own the rights to all of this stuff, and they're sort of suggesting that it may come flooding out later when those 
when the patents, I guess, are up. Uh, this is, you know, silicon's not new. Uh, Ulysse Nardine had it, up, you know, back in, I think, in the 90s or sometime they were using it. So, but uh, to me, it's something that if Philippe Dufour doesn't like it, uh, there's probably a good reason for it. What do you think, uh, both as Rolex owners and non-Rolex owners? Right now, the Rolex owners, I think, have the best one in the Paracrome. The only place I know that Siloxi is used is in the Pearl Diver, but we're not talking about good and bad as far as the functionality. We're talking about it as, is this the way we want uh, mechanical watches to go? Let me know what you think, and until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watch Collection, and this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. Thank you.